Hey, what's happening? It's Kevin Gates. Make sure you check me out on the Bootleg Kev Podcast. Bootleg Kev Show, special guest in here, the legendary Kevin Gates. Welcome. I got a question. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, could I pray first? Let's go, man. Before we do this. Of course, let's do it. A'udhu billahi min ash shaytan min rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim maliki yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka na'asta'in. Itina al-Sirata al-Mustaqeen. Sirata al-Nadeen an'amta alayhum. Qayr al-Makdubi alayhum al-Dalin ameen. La ilaha la anta subhanaka na kuntu min az-Alameen. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Wajah. Almighty creator and maker of the heavens and earth. Thank you for all the wonderful blessings in which you bestowed upon us in this life and in the after. Ask that you forgive us for all our sins. We forget those who sin against us, even the sins we may have committed, knowing and unknowing. Be with each and every brother and sister in all living species, those lost, found, incarcerated, those free. Let anything that I say that's uplifting to people come from you and you alone. Let anything that I say that's not uplifting to people come from the shaitan and me. I'll be here responsible. I mean, there it is. You know, it's uh, the the last time I interviewed you. You prayed before the interview too. That was um, talking about with uh, dude with DJ Head with the "Don't Touch Me" interview. But it wasn't. But like, I think that that was misinterpreted. No, I. You know what I tell? I was, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I go ahead. Like, I understand what you're saying, but please don't touch me again. Yeah. I, I just. It just was different, it's, and I, I'm not trying to have picks and choosers, mm -hmm. but some people. The energy's in alignment. Other people, the energy's not in alignment. And there's nothing against him. He's mm -hmm. a great guy. Great guy. Great guy. You know what I'm saying? It's just I believe that maybe my energy was off that day. Here. You know what's interesting about that, about that day was we did the interview, and after the interview, I don't know if you remember, we talked for like an hour, and you played us the album, and you were like, man, I wish we would have started the interview now because now I know y'all and now we, yeah, we've... You know, you step into an unfamiliar situation and it just was, it was tense being that I had just came home. I was Yeah, you super, were fresh out. I was on supervised release. Mm -hmm. So I was still in a different type of mode. I was still... Can we get the mic in front of you if you don't mind? Oh, just shit. yeah. I was still in a, a transitioning period mm -hmm. from being in the box to being back in uh, society. So, you know, it was still a little different for me. Yeah, that was, that was, um, I always, cause, cause people always ask me about that one moment and I'm always like, you know what's, I tell them, I'm like, you know what's crazy is after the interview ended, we hung out and the energy was amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And like you played us the whole album front to back and we had good talks. Like it was, yeah. it was, it was a, that was still a, it was, a, I mean. I I'm going to be honest with you. Like when I look at old interviews mm -hmm. and old videos of myself i cringe like that's the that was the own drugs kevin wow that was the that was the fat you know unhealthy on drugs like i don't know well, it's beautiful because i could look at my growth and see it but i never want to be that person again right ever in life what um do you think was the turning point for you to get sober? And because I just feel like you're more spiritually just intact. Tapped like I in. feel like you're tapped in. Yeah, man. I feel like um, the energy's different. I tell you something I never told people before in the interview. I've been spiritual my whole life, and I think instead of owning up to my responsibility, I would use drugs to kind of dim my light, so to say, or turn my gift down a little. Because when it's intense, it's intense. When you're in tune, you're in tune. Mm. And it also, I had a fear of people looking at me weird for my beliefs, my belief system. But everybody has to win their own way. And right now, I'm winning my own way. Like for the first time in my life, I'm proud of myself. Like, I could cry right now. I'm That's proud amazing, of myself. Man. I think about everything I've been through, and I look at where I'm at now. And I always hear people say, without a test, you can never have a testimony. But, like, for anybody that's suffering with depression or you done been through something in your past that was traumatic, we are not our past. Mm. 
every day you have a chance, an opportunity. Every day is a new opportunity to find your gratitude and be better than what you was the day before. A lot of people say that they figure life out when they start moving with gratitude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just being thankful for just the littlest shit, man. Because sometimes I feel like we get so wrapped up in chasing what's next. We don't live in the moment. We don't appreciate what's going on right now. I was at, I was at this other spot downtown. I was there at 11 o'clock, 1130. I left at 10. I was like, I'm going to always be there early. And then I went to the old building, the one across from the Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. I was there at 1245. And then it just was meant to be. And then we came over here. Mm -hmm. But I used to record here. Well, on the other side. Oh, yeah. Next door, there's a, a studio two doors yeah, down. Yeah, I used to record here. I recorded Murder for Hire. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. Yeah, I got this place in uh, February before the pandemic started. This was years ago. Yeah, yeah, But this, I know this place was, a, I mean, you know, people use this as a studio still. I mean, that's kind of at night. It's a recording studio. During the day, we do the show here. Um, Beautiful. But yeah, man, uh, it's just been dope to see your growth. And I, like I said, I got to uh, get an early listen. Well, the album is out now. So when this comes out, it's out. But I listened to the whole album front to back, and it feels like, I guess it feels like, what you just said, you're proud of yourself. It feels like this was a lot of, it felt like a therapeutic body of work. Yeah, I did a lot of releasing on this project. I ruffled a lot of feathers. Please find it in your heart to forgive me. I'm so not sorry. Yeah. Even this uh, Super Gremlin freestyle, you're going off five minutes straight. Oh, super General. Or the, yeah, it was a Super General free. I mean, five minutes straight just. Delving through everything. It was a release. Yeah, man. It was, it just, yeah, that freestyle's crazy. Like, uh, you know, obviously there's the, the, the parts that went viral, but the parts that didn't go viral where you're really kind of just bearing your soul on that thing. People, people gravitate toward what they want to gravitate toward. You know, I guess it was like gumbo. It had a little something in there for it everybody. Had something for everybody, for sure. A little ear candy for everybody, I guess. Yeah, hundred um, percent. How do you feel like? Because um, you know, I feel like it's twenty twenty two. You know, maybe the last five or six years in hip hop has been a real drug infused vibe. You've been through your struggles with drug addiction. What is some advice you would give up and coming artists who maybe where you are, are are at where you were maybe a couple years ago right now that maybe you want to change their it's life? It's not a it's not a bad thing at all. Like, these are people that choose to self-medicate, and I don't judge, but I pray that everybody finds their way eventually mm. because when I was on that level, I was doing what people on that level did, I guess so to say. Yeah. You know, it's about frequency. It's about raising your vibration. And I used to use drugs as more like a coping mechanism. Yep. I guess so to say. Alcohol as a, too? As a vice. I got on alcohol. I never drank. Mm. I never drank, but I got on alcohol like 2018, 19. It was like maybe 18 or 19. That's not long ago. Yeah, and I just, I just, I just wanted to feel good. I just wanted to numb everything and not feel it. And that's what. But I'm making it like I was just a big alcoholic. Right, 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 right. right. I, because I'm, I really can't drink. I can't. You even have a low drink. tolerance. Yeah, I got a low tolerance. Like you give me one or two shots, I'm. You're, you're, all, you're on a level. It's over with. I'm sauced up. Yeah. So, but I saw a live that I was on live one time, and I was on it. I was like, man, that's embarrassing. Look at yourself. Mm. And I started talking to myself. I'm like, man, come on, that's not him. What were like the like your drugs of choice? Like if you were c coping, like what would be? Was it was it lean? Was it pills? Yeah, I used to drink a lot of lean. I don't think I ever sat down with you to do an interview, and I wasn't just fresh off the cup. Mm. It's a hard thing to kick, I right? Drink a lot of lean, and I didn't probably smoke more weed than a chimney. Are you off weed? Period. Yeah, I went through my phase. Well, I'm off of it, but 
once I finish this this run, I want to go somewhere and just smoke, relax, and just relax and yeah. just smoke. I just want to smoke. I just really want to just get high and just relax and not. There's think nothing about, like that, man. And not think about nothing, I, man. There's nothing like getting high and just looking in the sky. Relax. I want to, but I'm just too focused right now. I respect I want it too, so bad, but I'm just too focused. Have you done any psychedelics? Like what kind of psychedelics? Mushrooms, uh, ayahuasca, you know, because I, I, I know right now, shroom psilocybin is something. I, to, I, I don't. I hate to say this. I, um, I'm in a medicine tribe. I come from a medicine tribe. My mother's side of the family, they native to this land. Mm. So you've done psilocybin, yeah. I'm, well, I don't know what the name. Shrooms. Mushrooms. Yeah, I grow my own mushroom. That's amazing. The Golden Teachers. The Golden Teachers a good shroom strain. And to be honest with you, it's the spiritual aspect of the mushroom. You know what's crazy is I've I've been paying attention to you the last like few years and I'm like I have a feeling Gates is like woke in that space. I just got that feeling. I've been. Yeah. I just never talked about it. I've been. It's such a powerful thing to. Like when I see people, I hate to say this, yeah. when I see people take mushrooms and they like, I take it with candy. That's processed sugar. Mm -hmm. You're not respecting the, the spirit of the mushrooms, the mushroom spirits. Like what the beautiful thing about mushrooms, they heal what needs to be healed. If a tree is dying, under the under the I'm not trying to be all what they call it all nerdy. Right, right, nerdy. right. No, no, no. This is But Pachamama, Mother Earth. The earth is our mother. She was here long before us. She'll be here long after we leave. Okay. The under the ground, the roots are connected like this. All of the trees are connected. If one tree over here is decaying, then the, what the mushrooms do is they'll grow. In a line, you always see the mushrooms, they always grow in mm -hmm. a line from one tree to the other. They tap down into the root system and they bring energy from one tree to the other. That's how advanced that nature is. Nature is more advanced than we will ever be. That they, they communicate. Like I know this sounds weird, but the trees communicate Listen. they communicate with one another. It's like if you know anything about harvesting flowers, Santa Maria. Like that's I hear people say weed. I don't like I like to address it by her her name. Mm -hmm. Like it's a spirit. Like marijuana is a spirit. Santa Maria. A Santa Maria spirit. When you harvesting, you can't harvest your flowers in the same room with the other flowers. They give off enzymes and the other flowers. How do they communicate like that? Mm. It's far more advanced than and we, we even know. We will ever understand. So every Everything has an essence. And when I say native to this land, I'm talking about the Taino Indians. You know, it, like the Taino Indians is made up of everything. They made up of Choctaw, Cherokee, everything, a pet, everything, because they was taken from this land and dispersed all over the Caribbean during slavery. So that's why you got Taino Indians in Jamaica all the way around the Caribbean to Puerto Rico. So that's why, like I say, a Taino, like they native. Yeah, I feel like the way plants communicate, the way ants communicate. I'm just saying that because if somebody listen, they're going to be like, you said Native American, you know. And oh, you were very I thought specific. he said his mother was Puerto Rican, you know, and all that. So I just, yeah, I'm I, just giving a little tidbit in case because they love, people love to critique me for some reason. Yeah, I've gotten super high and just thought, how the fuck do trees talk to each other? How do ants talk to each other? Like, there's like a, a frequency. It's like a... Electromagnetic yeah. pulsation. Mm -hmm. It's electric. That's why your phone don't work around trees. That's wild. That's real. Uh, have you ever had like a really therapeutic... Because, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, for people who don't know, if you do shrooms, they got a, a certain... They got certain levels of doses, right? There's, there's microdosing, and then there's the hero's dose, which is what people do when they just want to like work through 30 years of shit in one sitting. Have you ever had like a therapeutic moment on shrooms? I'm a big shroom guy. So yes, sir. Yeah. Was it something? Cause I know, I know a few people who've like literally had life changing experiences. Yes, sir. You've had that experience. Yes, sir. Do you remember like what it was or because some, I don't think people understand. I think people who don't do it. Think it's like you take shrooms and you hallucinate or you, See, see things that aren't there, which it's more of like. That's, 
it, 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 it pulls hits, back it, what's it already it, there, it, right? It is your neural paths. Mm. It may have, the, the beautiful thing about the body is if we've experienced trauma, our bodies will suppress that trauma. So we won't have to keep reliving it. It won't have to hurt us. What happens is you may you may be exhibiting a behavior that stems from a traumatic past. So once you sit and really respect the mushrooms and sit with them and ask yourself, why am I like this? Why did why do I do this? Mm. Why do I do that? And it'll be revealed to you. Everything, all of the answers are within. Nothing external could ever add value. Have you ever done it's the? Within, this, have, I was gonna say, have you ever? Ahead, I was. Have you ever smoked the toad, as Mike Tyson would Talk call it? Bufo. The DMT. Talking about bufo. I don't know what bufo is. That's the toad. Yeah. Well, there's two different way. There's two different fr- toads. Toad medicine. One is bufo. That's where you smoke the, the when they rub his back. Right. That's and what I'm talking about. That's bufo. Where you freebase it. And then the other one, where you clean your lymphatic system, is gumbosito. Mm. Humble, and they take well, it's the still the same poison, but they put it on you, they burn you, and put it on your skin. That sounds crazy. I haven't heard of that. Have you done? A, have you have you tried that? Like I said, I, I'm in a medicine try. That's fire, man. I'm, I'm so scared to try it because I hear you kind of gone for like you know fifteen. Well, Bufo, yeah, like you hit you it, and then you're just you just kind of. I'm not saying that I ever tried it, but I'm gonna say you're gonna be gone for like ten minutes, but it's gonna feel like you've been gone for years. I've heard it's that. Feel like you've been gone for a long time, but you only been gone for ten minutes. But that's just those are just starter kits like mm. ayahuasca and excuse excuse me, madre ayahuasca. You got to be respectful when you're speaking to these spirits that yep. they're strong as medicines that come from the earth. But they just start up starting kits to me. They just let you know what's already in you. You can reach these same levels through controlled breathing mm. and meditation. You can reach these levels. You can unlock the DMT that's naturally produced in your body through breathing. I didn't know that. Yeah, so all of these feelings that we trying to feel, we can unlock. The They're brain. there. Yeah, there's just certain uh, things that kind of help, I guess, jumpstart you. It, def- yeah, it's like a jump start, like a yeah. starter kit. It helps you understand and realize what's already there. Yeah, ayahuasca is something. I, I know you got to have like a shaman and, you know, probably prepare with your diet before you do something like a, that. Yeah, it's a dieta. Like a, well, that's a special diet. Yeah. All liquids, no food. You don't want any dense energy. You want to vibrate at the highest frequency possible. And when you hold space, you hold in a sacred space. It's ceremony. Um, a lot of people don't talk about it. I mean, I don't care to really talk about it because when you hear about it, you hear all these, yeah, man, it was a trip. It's not a trip. Like, mm. it's not a drug. It's a, not something you do recreationally. Nah, this is right. medicine. Yeah. I think that's the difference. I think like even with shrooms, which is obviously a lot more mild than ayahuasca, but it's like you're in t- like when you take it, what's your intent? Because that's probably what you're going to get out of it. Yeah, you got to It's better when you do anything, you, you should state your intentions. You should do, be intentional with everything you do. Even that's drinking fair. water. Mm-hmm. I mean, water is living. I'm not trying to sound weird. But it's a spirit. It's living. Life. Water is life. Without it, what are we? No, you're right. Hey, water is literally life. I sound like one of those, you know, eccentric people right now. There's nothing wrong with being an eccentric guy, man. I'm not trying to sound like that. What did you? You you, kind of pulled this out of me. Nah, man. if, if If it was talking about some music or some shit, then yeah. But it's like we kind of. You kind of pulled this out of me, and it's just like coming out because I usually don't have these conversations, especially in interviews. Right, right, right. You um obviously you're in great shape right now. You, That's right. yeah, I'm fair full square. Yeah, man. Um, what dietary things are you doing that kind of have gotten? Obviously, you're hitting the gym, 
But in terms of just got like. Got on that Adderall three times a day in the gym, how I got skinny. Got on that alcohol, which kind of helped me block out all my symptoms. Yeah. I was going to say, we could get to the Adderall, which, by the way, if you ever edit, edit video, all the video editors I know are on Adderall. God bless them. Nah, I, um, I try. This is my first time speaking about it. I, I tried Adderall. Well, I ain't going to say I tried it. I did it. As a pre-workout? I did Adderall and pre-workout. At the same time? Yeah, I was in the gym like I was on a mission. And my mind, it don't stay focused. Mm. Well, then it didn't stay focused. And then, thank God uh, for Ambrosia. They came out with this mushroom pre-workout. Yeah, a lot of people are doing that. Yeah. Yeah, I know people who will microdose before their workout. No, I'm on I'm on I'm on um Ambrosia okay. pre workout. I'm okay. on it right now. That's interesting. Big handful of mushrooms. I take some and recharge. So the Adderall though kind of got you like super focused to get in the gym uh, initially when you tried it. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess that's what you want to say. Yeah, I. It's a very uh. They say it's like uh, what's that that limitless pill. In that, mo- nah, that, that movie not, where you take it and you you could get shit done. It's not like that, but I lost a lot of weight. Like when people tell me, when people used to say you had surgery, I used to look at it offensively. But I, you know, I looked that good that you think I had surgery. But nah, they thought you had like a male BBL or something. I think that's wild. I think that's what I don't. I'm about to say I don't. I don't know because I never had that surgery. Of course, I had been shot before. And I had surgery on my leg, mm-hmm. and that was just horrific. And I was like, I never willingly undergo that type of screw. Yeah, you'll like, never go under the knife unless you have to. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Forgive me. I get mine out the mud, which my fitness journey took a little longer. Mm-hmm. But the beautiful thing about it was, when I first started working out, I was still doing drugs. Then I noticed that I started slacking up on the drugs because it was like. You know, I don't have any energy to get up and work out in the morning. Then I noticed my work, I started being able to work out more proficient, Mm -hmm. if that's the right word. Yeah, I mean, efficient, proficient, whatever. Proficiently. We get it. Efficiently. Yeah. Yeah, so I noticed that. And then I also noticed that once I started making small diet changes, it's like I wanted to take my singing series when I was on tour. Mm -hmm. And I was reading about all of the things that cause mucus build up and I was reading about animal products. So I'm vegan, 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 vegan when I'm on tour, when I'm not on tour, I'm vegan, but I still eat animal products. Like cheese or eggs. Or- I love cheese. That's well, I love cheese. Um, I love steak. Vegan cheese is terrible. I don't want to say that because they got some vegan cheese that's good. Now. I haven't had I haven't had any of it. Yeah, they got some vegan yeah. cheese that's kind of good. But you're right. Yo, what up, man? We got to stop the interview real quick to tell you about our good folks at Blue Chew. That's right. Go to BlueChew.com. Fellas, you know, sometimes you go through some stress. You go through a little anxiety and your dick is not performing maybe how you'd like. It's called ED. A lot of guys go for, through ED. You could just be old as shit if you're watching this and your dick ain't working like it did when you were like 20. You know what I mean? Well, listen, Blue Chew, it is the wave. Uh, how about this? The same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis getting delivered right to your door in a chewable form, indiscreet packaging. And the best part about it is it's all online. Zero awkward visits to the doctor's office. Zero. You go online, you sign up with the promo code bootleg that's right bootleg when you check out you will get the first month for free all you got to do is pay five dollars in shipping and you're gonna get one month supply of blue chew all right and you're gonna be fucking like you were fucking never fucking before your dick's gonna i'm gonna assume you're adding at least a quarter of an inch of erection that shit's going to be rocked up, rocked up and socked up. All right, boys. So what you need to do one more time, go to bluechew.com and use that promo code bootleg and get your first month for free. Bootleg, promo code bootleg on bluechew.com. Let's get back to the interview. The mucus of dairy causes so much mucus. It's like crazy. Like, And I couldn't, and it, it affects my singing. Mm-hmm. And then I started reading about like animal products and 
when you're not getting enough chlorophyll in your body because chlorophyll is what helps metabolize animal products. But when you're not getting enough chlorophyll, you're still like, damn, that's why they always feed you vegetables with, with steak. With the steak, yeah. It helps you digest it. So, And you can have steak once every two weeks. All things within moderation. So I had to get off of the, I'm extra vegan to having balance. Yeah, I think that there is also like health benefits to having animal protein that you probably won't be able to. I like the way I feel when I'm vegan. I do. I love steak the way every I feel. two weeks is a nice but, compromise. But that's my reward. Yeah. Like, I work super hard. I have a cheat day every Sunday. Mm. Um, Sunday's a good cheat day. Yeah, that's the best cheat day. Yeah. That's, a, that's a, when I'm on like when I'm like trying to be on my shit and I'm trying to eat good. I always save Sundays. I love cheeseburgers. Oh man! But I'm gonna have to really curtail it because I'm about to be going on tour soon. Got to tour the new just, album, the album, yeah, album man. Dropped. You uh, but can, I love cheeseburgers. Can you give me if you could rank the top five fast food cheeseburgers from one to five? We're talking major chains, not talking like. The spot on the corner that you love. If we had to go from one to five, best fast food burgers. Because I always fight with people about how good McDonald's is because I think it's fire. I'm going to be honest. It's not the burger. It's the mustard, the onions, the ketchup, and the pickles at yes. McDonald's that make they cheese. And then you put good. the fries on the burger. You do that too? Yes. <laughs> I get that number nine do with the two ever, cheeseburgers. Do you, ever, do you ever dip it dip your burger in barbecue sauce? Of course. Sweet and sauce? Of course. Yeah. With the fries? Oh God, please no. I love McDonald's. I'd be like, yo, if McDonald's was trash, it wouldn't be the number one restaurant in the world. Now, it might be trash for you, but all, all things in all things in moderation. Yeah, you know? everybody got something on that McDonald's menu they fuck with. Yeah, I love the pancakes. Oh, the fucking hotcakes! I get the hotcakes. Yes, and I put the I put the butter on there. Then I put strawberry jelly on there. Then I drizzle the syrup. That's why I like that McGriddle. Cause but it's I'm kind of... weird though. They got this restaurant called Raisin Canes. Oh my Chicken god, fingers. the best fucking sauce. I go get I go get the pancakes, and I go get Wendy's French fries. And I go get Raisin Cane's chicken fingers and I eat, I wrap, it, I'm weird. I wrap my, I wrap my chicken finger inside the pancake. Do you introduce the cane sauce into this equation? I got to. And the honey mustard. Uh, yeah. So let me get this straight. You'll go to McDonald's. I'm a foodie. Get me, I mean, listen, me and you both, we're on the same wavelength of fat fucks here. We, I well, food tastes better when you wait till your cheat day. That's real because it's Cause almost on, like like it, on Mondays I'd be like, oh man, that's six Sunday more days. So let me get this straight though. I don't want to just pass this over. You'll go to McDonald's, you'll get the hotcakes. Yeah. You go to Wendy's, you'll get their fries. I get like ten orders of hotcakes. You'll get Wendy's fries. Wendy's fries with the Wendy's barbecue sauce, which is the best barbecue sauce. Yeah, it is. And then you get. Raisin Cane's chicken. Raisin Cane's and chicken. And we just combine all three on a cheat day into some just metamorphically amazing. I take, my, I take all of my pancakes. People just sit down and watch me. They, I, put the, I put the butter on there. I put the strawberry jelly. I put a little bit of syrup. I take my my um, Wendy's fries. It's so weird I, my process. I put all my Wendy's fries down. I put my chicken fingers across them. I take the the lemons and I squeeze my lemons across it. I drizzle the hot sauce across it. Then I take the barbecue sauce and dribble my barbecue sauce across it. Then I put my fries and my chicken finger on my um. I make like Pancake? a little burrito on a on a hot cake, and I just eat it. And people be like, "What do you do with the cane sauce?" Though? I dip it. Okay, okay, okay. I just dip it. Like every other bite, I might dip it from. From the raisin cane sauce to the honey mustard, or vice versa. No, man, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I'm not gonna lie, I'm intrigued. You're talking to the same person that put strawberry jelly and grape jelly on their cheeseburgers. I've actually, uh, I'm just weird. I went to some like fancy place recently, and they had, um, I bought a cheeseburger and it had bacon jam. Yeah, they've been doing the bacon jam. I don't care for that. I don't eat pork. Yeah, but it was it wasn't bad. I I, I understand. Like your just, logic there. I just can't because I know the 
I know the truth behind it, so I can't you eat You can't it. eat the swine. I just can't eat it. They don't have any veins. That is kind of crazy. They don't man. detox. Mm. And, they, they'll eat, and they'll eat anything. But they really like some of the smartest animals on earth. They super smart. They're survivors. They super smart, but I just, because they got them sometimes. They used to run on, across my land mm -hmm. on my farm. You'll mm -hmm. see them in the morning. And they got a way they communicate with each other and everything. They like little people. Well, you're Muslim. Muslims can't eat pig. Am I getting, is that right? Yeah, I don't yeah. eat pork. Yeah, yeah. You've also, um, on your, uh, I want to shout out to uh, Fredo Bang, who you gave some love to in this super general freestyle. Yeah. It's one of the, uh, I don't know who the other guy was. Cause you oh, shot Ben 10, NBA Ben 10. Okay, so uh, as two of the guys who. Now give I was you, watching a. Uh, give you love. I was watching a thing, like a documentary. And he was on there rapping the streets of BR. Mm -hmm. And he was like Kevin Gates, and he saluted me. And I was like, man, it felt good because a lot of people don't do that. Well, I do feel like your influence on a generation is very understated. I do feel like, you know, the 2014, 2015 wave that you had going. I was living in Florida at the time. I was living in Tampa. So I was very much, you know, you were very big in that market um and i feel like somehow you don't get enough credit for a lot of what's going on right now specifically even just with your city you know what i'm saying i'm not even looking for that it just feel good when people do salute right it just feel good that's why i love my concerts i'm nervous before every concert because i want to give it the best performance ever i work out before every concert I get there. Get the nerves out. I get there a day or two early and work out. I stay in tip top shape so I can be performance ready at all times. I've seen you do a show, after the show, do an after party. This was in Tampa. Then go to the studio. No, no, no. You went to Club Sky in Tampa after Wild Splash, and you walked through the entire crowd. And hugged every person in the, in the crowd. Yeah, by myself. By yourself. Yeah. No security. You literally, I mean, we're talking about a club of full 1,500 people. And this is like, this is, I think you might have had two phones out at this time. Um, and I'd never seen anybody. I was grateful. Embrace the people that were there to support them the way you did that day. I was like, this is, I've never seen them this. the people that love me for real. So I was, I was grateful. I was grateful for that moment. I was grateful. So I had to. I had to touch the people because I was grateful. Yeah. Has that ever gone wrong? No. Well, I had a situation where, and it's so crazy. It was it was the worst. I, I want to say it was the worst thing that had ever happened to me in my life, but it really was the best thing because I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Mm. I got a level of freedom that most people only wish they had. But I was kind of blackballed. What happened in Polk County, you talking about? Yeah, I yeah. was kind of blackballed. Like, I never made contact with the girl. I tried to. I didn't even know that it was a girl. I just seen hands just steady grabbing because the light was so bright. Right. But at the same time, me being who I am, I'm going to defend myself. Right. That's like somebody talking about, man, bro. How you would feel if if that that could have been my little sister? Man, I'd have did that to your mama. I don't have no pics. Also, that's your safe. Your stage, yeah, like stage I is don't, supposed to be your safe space. I can't see who it is. Yeah. I'd have did that to your mama. Right. I'd have did that to your grandfather. I don't have no pics. Mm -hmm. Win, lose, or maybe that's all it was gonna be. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have no pics. Like this is what I I tell people that, and it's like nobody understand. They still throw that at me so every time, every now and then. But I'm like, my footage wasn't even permissible in court. I never made contact. Mm. It was no damages for her. I played soccer my whole life. Your head would have came off your body. Okay. My daughter was on stage with me. I had to move my daughter to the back of the stage. Right. Yeah, I think like. And at that time, at that time, being young, being ignorant, being out the streets, mm -hmm. you know, it's like. I'm a natural protector. So I ain't thinking about who down there. I'm protecting my tribe. I'm a chief. 
And I feel like the stage, if you're the guy who also goes in the crowd and embraces your fans, you should also have the stage be your safe place. This is where I'm But it just, it just, it I just was that crazy happened. that it happened. I was living there when that happened. It so. was just crazy when it happened because I never made contact, but the world just blew it up like he just did. And I'm like, what? Then I end up going to jail. The charge is a $400 fine. I went to jail for six months. So crazy. For six months. Like, I was supposed to have a tea party with my daughter. Mm-hmm. And it's like I lied to her. Like, I missed, like, two of her birthdays. It was just crazy. I did six months. And then I was already fighting a charge in Chicago, which I was innocent on that charge also. And I ended up doing 33 months, which I was supposed to do 36 months, but the judge showed leniency. He didn't abuse discretion, so I guess that was a good thing. But... I was innocent, but I could also say that was the best thing that ever could have happened to me because I wouldn't be where I'm at right now if that wouldn't have happened. Like, that was the best thing that could have happened. What were the, because some people go through that and they come out on the other side of it worse for it, and some people go through it and they come out on the other side of it with more growth and come out better it's, for it. How did, how did, how, what were the things that you kind of took away from that? It's... Obviously, sitting down for 33 months is a serious chunk. It's, it, it's trying at times, you know. But my eyes was open to reality. And reality is harsh, and the world is a very cruel place. It is. And every time I meet people that's dealing with depression or suffering, I tell them, man, the world's a cruel place. Trust me, I know. But I had time to sit with myself. Like the six months in Florida, I was like, man, yeah, I'm going to do it this way when I go back out there. But I wasn't all the way ready. Then when I went to Chicago, I was like, I'm going to do it this way after like maybe a year. Mm -hmm. But as I got longer into the bid, I just was like, it had stripped me. It broke me all the way down to... Being more appreciative, being more appreciative, and that's that's when I that's when I really sat with myself for the first time. And the other time I went to jail, you know, I was in the mix. Right. This time it was like I had matured. You know, this is my first time ever taking yoga because this is my first time being in a minimum security prison. And the mm-hmm. other time I go to maximum security prisons, where we just in this bitch thugging, you know. But it's structured. You know, our prison is structured. And that's the first time I had ever, like, experimented with yoga. And I liked it. At first, though, I was like, I ain't about to do no yoga. That's some old bitch ass shit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You go do the yoga. Right. My silly kept on telling me, man, I'm telling you, man, you just got to do it. His name T-Bone, man. Shout out to T-Bone. Yep. So yoga. I mean, yeah, that is interesting. That's what he used to tell me. Come on, Papa, we got to go do yoga. Come on. He's, man, they got yoga. And I'm like, man, I ain't about to go do no yoga. Man, I'm telling you, he couldn't even, he was having knee problems. He started doing yoga. Now he's, he don't even, he's not even in pain anymore. Come on, you got to go. So I'm like, all right, yeah. But just one day I went, I gave it a try for the first time. I said, man, this bitch ass shit. Man, the first, maybe the first two poses I got into I immediately had to go to the bathroom and shit. Wow. And it just, yoga started curving my appetite and things of that nature. But when I came home, upon being reinserted back into society, I kind of like got away from those things. But then when I got back into fitness, I was like. You back on the yoga? Yeah, I do yoga every day. What are the benefits for somebody, for someone who says the same thing you said, this is some bitch ass shit. Hey, I know it's going to sound crazy, but when I meet, People that do yoga, I be like, you're a gangster. Because mm. I know it's been a, a journey for me. And the beautiful thing is yoga is non-judging. It's just you being one with yourself. It's non-judging. It's just you focus on yourself. You focus on your breathing. And every breath you try to deepen the stretch. And it's very, very, it's therapeutic. It's like you get a high from it. Wow. 
and you release. Like one time I was doing a pigeon pose. That's where you had your leg like a little L mm-hmm. and your other leg. That's when you open your hip. And I was opening my hip flexor. And when I was in the stretch, I just started crying. Just started crying tears. And the lady, she just put her hands on my back. And she say, the energy that you're feeling is not your own. You're having a release. You're having an emotional detox. She said, this is psychic debris that you're picking up on. Just release the things that no longer serve you. She said, no, say it. Say, I release all of the things that no longer serve me. I said it. And then my new yoga coach, I was telling her that my left hip not as flexible as my right hip. And she was like, well, you know, your left side of your body is feminine. Your right side is masculine. So you should ask your hip, what is it that you're trying to teach me? So, like, I talk to my body parts now because once I start saying, what is it that you're trying to teach me or what is it that you need me to release, things start changing in my life. Like, it's crazy. Like, when we get rid of baggage. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, I will buy this or lighter. It's just the things around us weigh us down. They're anchors. That could be people, too, right? It could of be anything. Of course. Anything. Yeah. That's really one of the biggest things. So, when I every time I do my stretch now, my pigeon pose on the left side, I always tell my hip, thank you. Like, thank you for trusting me. Thank you for releasing. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for serving me. I thank my feet. Thank you for... All the stability you give me, cause I'm out just stepping on these. Over, I'm just. I mean, you do have a song. Right. You do have a song on the album called "Stepping." No, I just, <laughs> no, I just, Great record, by the way. I just, I just wanted to be funny. <laughs> and by the way, yeah, um, great body of work. I, I, I know that you had kind of uh, acknowledged that the last project maybe wasn't up to par. It was. It was beautiful. As far as the, uh, the just the, the, I guess how it performed. Um, it, it wasn't about the numbers. It was beautiful. The project was beautiful. It was a beautiful project. I believe the project may have been ahead of its time. Mm. Like Big Gangster when it came out, it was ahead of its time. Right. Now it's just whew, out of here. So the project was a beautiful project, but it was everything that I was going through emotionally during that time. That was one of my roughest times. Just personally, away from the music, you were just going through. During, during the making of I'm Him, that was one of the roughest times. Like, after the, during, like, toward the end of the Luca Brasi 3, going into the I'm Him, that was one of the roughest times of my life. But I was trying to mask it and pretend. But people that know me, they knew. But I was dying on the inside. I was suffering. And that album kind of came out before its time. But it's beautiful that it came out. Because I could sit back now and appreciate it mm. and be reflective. Like, look what I overcame. That's got to be a hard thing to be going through some personal shit like that. Oh man, while, you, and you can't say nothing while being Kevin Gates. And you gotta and you gotta be perfect all the time. Yeah, you gotta be perfect. That's crazy. Like you got you experience every human emotion that it is even more so because you wear your heart on the sleeve. You're a lover. You're mm-hmm. a giver. But no matter what you do, the world beats you up. You get beat up when you go home. It's like nothing you ever do is good enough. So you never really feel welcome anywhere you go. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, this come from being a child. Like, mm-hmm. get out. It's like you never really feel welcome anywhere you go because it's like, if I'm not being what everybody want me to be, then are you going to still love me the same? And that's just what I was dealing with. Like, man, I worked so hard so other people can enjoy it. This is my first time enjoying myself, enjoying my life. When you're someone like you, who's a lot of people depend on, it's like, it's almost like you're so much to so many people. But like, and, and you know, I'm in that same position. Where I was I have, taught wrong. Okay. I was taught wrong. We wasn't taught right. We was taught wrong. And... As a child, when you a provider or look out for people, you develop this sense of I'm only as good as what I could do for everybody around me. Mm -hmm. If you can't be used, you useless. That's real shit. But when you love somebody as you love yourself, 
the way you love somebody else is a reflection of how you love yourself. You know, like mm. if you hungry and I cut up some fruit and bring you some fruit, you know, this is what I would eat. Right. I look at my body like my temple now. Right. This is, you know what I'm saying? So the way that you love others is the way that you love yourself because money isn't always the solution for everything. It's really an enabler. It's a Band-Aid. Mm. It doesn't fix anything. Anything that needs to be fixed has to be done on the inside. Did you ever get to the point where everybody comes to you, right? You have kids. Uh, obviously, you're in a, a public relationship. You have the labels. You got you know people in your entourage, your manager, whatever. But it's like, who do I go to when I'm going through some shit? Because you're, you're kind of the leader. I know who I go to. Who do you go to? The microphone. That's your therapy. That's, That's where my you get therapy. It out. I got songs that I never released. Probably won't ever release, but I had to get it out. That's how mm. I've been. That's real. You have that outlet, which is great. I mean, you know, and then working out, going to the gym. And I think that's why people love you so much because people have such an emotional connection to you because you've been so vulnerable on on records over the years. Yeah, it takes greater courage to show exhibit vulnerability than it does to be a tough guy. Mm. That's real. You know, when I, I the times that I was being tough, it was out of fear, a fear of being vulnerable. The reason I learned how to fight and took all these different martial laws and all of this, because I had a fear of being weak, a fear of being vulnerable, a fear of being taken advantage of. The hardest thing for me to ever learn how to do was surrender. That's crazy. Um, what up, y'all? Hey, we got to stop the interview to tell you about our partners, the presenting sponsor of the Bootleg Head Podcast. Our family at Odd Socks. Man, they're dropping so much heat at Odd Socks right now. Go to oddsocksofficial.com. Use the promo code bootlegkev. One word, bootlegkev. You will save 20% off at checkout. Listen, they got the socks. You know what I mean? Shout out to the Ninja Turtles. Uh, I totally just dropped my mic flag. And then they got the Odd Socks Basics, which are just kind of like these boys. My favorites. I love the Odd Socks Basics. And let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, Odd Socks now has the underwear. That's right. Tapatio draws on that ass. Remember, oddsocksofficial.com. Use that promo code bootlegkev. Save 20% off at checkout. Let's get back to the podcast. You uh, acknowledged Dolph being right there with you. Dolph ain't gone. He's with you. He's right here in the booth with me. He with me right now. Dolph was a good friend of mine. Um a great guy, somebody who was a leader, somebody who, uh, you know, obviously what happened to him was a tragedy, but. Um, Everything happened for a reason. Nothing happens without the permission of the creator. And I know for a fact that he was in tune with the creator. Mm. He come to me sometime. My brother Miser come to me sometime. I don't know why I'm saying this, but. Dude, I've had a few artists, Mozzie, one of them, who's, who brought you up as. Not that Mozzie. Talking about from Sacramento? No, I mean, I, 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 I've, I've had artists who brought you up, like, in terms of, like, you're kind of like their spiritual advisor, low-key. Like, artists, even Moneybag Yo, who I know you said you guys aren't as close, but I remember interviewing nah, Moneybag Yo a few years ago. That's my bro. But I, I, I know that, he, like, he had mentioned that, like, you had kind of helped get him into, you know, exploring his faith. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I look at it like this. What I eat not going to make another person shit. And what you eat not going to make me shit. But the beautiful thing about it is we may not be brothers and sisters in faith, but we still brothers and sisters in humanity. Mm. Anything that you go through, I'm going to feel it. I mean, we get lost on the exterior, but we all the same on the inside to an extent. Right, right, right. To, right, an, right. Extent. to an extent, yeah. yeah. That's, that's fair. How much flack you've gotten for this Beyonce bar? Ain't nobody say nothing to me. I do like how you preface the bar with uh, if you guys are swingers. Uh, and in general, uh, that that <laughs> Ruby Rose replied to your to your uh, to your to be honest. And this is what I'll do respect. That's one of the most beautiful women in the world. Like I sit in a trap with all the monsters. They say the same thing like. All I did is say what everybody think. That's fair. You're the most beautiful woman in the world. Like, I would drink your piss. Like, what the fuck? Like, come on, man. Like, what the fuck? Beyonce's piss, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Right here yeah. in my mouth. What's that? 
But I'm just saying, like, you got to think. I, I speak for the niggas that's incarcerated, that sit there and watch these people on TV and everything. Mm -hmm. This is what everybody thinking. This is true. I mean, Beyonce is, we always have talks like. That's like, know. that's like, say, if this was right here, this, you know, this is my water bottle or this is my wife. I feel good knowing that everybody in the world want this, what I have, what's mine. Yeah, I'm winning. Yeah. I'm living y'all dreams every night. So, mm. you know, people, the other people that took it disrespectfully, y'all just scared to say what, y'all scared to be who y'all are, I guess. Mm -hmm. By the way, I don't put that much thought into stuff. I just speak from the heart. At what point in time did you realize in life that squirt was piss? It's not. It kind of is. I just say that, but it's not. It's like it's like a portion of it is because you. I got a question. Okay. For you. Yeah. Every woman that you've been intimate with sexually, were they squirtles? I think every woman is a squirter. Every woman is a squirter, but did you make every woman that you've been with sexually squirt? Every woman that I cared, every woman. I cared about, yes. Because to make a woman squirt is an art. I agree. It's an art. Like I, I feel like any woman I ever was with that I cared about pleasing, yes. It's a release. Right. So it's an art. If... If I don't make this woman come, if I don't make this woman squirt, I didn't do my job as a professional dicksman. Like I didn't get a I didn't get a, a A on my dick report. Your dick report card, yeah. Yeah. So I wanna always, you know, this is a brand name. I wanna always have a good dick report. You know, and I and I mean that with all due respect. To whoever listening, you know what I'm saying. Listen, buddy, we, we I'm there over with you. here, over here, over here. I look at a woman like art. Like I ain't to please my partner. I'm a pleasure activist. Mm. I get off on seeing whoever I'm intimately involved with get off my partner. Yes, as someone who's wife. it's crazy. This whole interview just went left, but. Well, shout out, you know, you know, it's interesting because I always tell that to you. Started off spiritual. And now we're talking about squirting. <laughs> hey, man. But I just noticed, like, when you do things selfishly, like the womb is his own entity, it's very spiritual. Right. The womb knows if you being selfish and she won't release. I'm like you. I've yeah. had my wife literally squirt in my mouth multiple times. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's do that, buddy. You know yes, what I'm sir. saying? What are we doing if we ain't trying to please the ones we love? <sighs> what? Yes, sir. Ain't nothing like having your girl ride your face and then things go, you know. But the thing is, though, the reason I brought up the piss thing is you might have a crazy night and the sheets are fucked. Mattress gets wet. You wake up the next morning. It's a lot, a little pissy of a smell. You got to have a fuck room. The fuck room? Yeah, yeah. Nice. You got a fuck room. And you, you got, got a fuck a, room and a sleep room. Yeah. That's interesting. So you you will just designate. A play room and a lay room. I don't even like the word. I don't like the word sex. I just say it so everybody know what I'm talking about. Right. But it's spiritual. It's spiritual unification. I pray before I have sex. This is spiritual. You pray before sex? Yes. Every time? Every time it's spiritual. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do. During? You'll pray during sex. Yeah, I just be thanking God. Would you ever stop and be like, "Give me a sec"? No, 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 no. But just in your head, you like, no, I say it out loud. Like if, if, like if I'm just in it, and I'm just really punching that dick. I'm talking about punching that dick in her stomach. I just be like, "Yes, Lord, <laughs> yes, Lord," because this, I never thought like coming from where I come from, me. I know people look at me like Kevin Gates, but I don't see Kevin Gates. Right. I see regular old Kevin. So I'm like, man, it's a blessing to be hitting a big booty bitch. You got a body of uh, a, 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 a work I'm of art about, in front of you. I'm talking about I got a work of art. I'm talking about I'm talking about just having my way and it's making them mad. Big booty bitch. I'm gonna hit from the bag. It just it's just a blessing mm. to me. Cause I ain't, you know. Would I you, didn't grow up just having this in my living room, you know? Right. 
You mentioned uh, you and Bundle of Britney had a little stint on this uh, on the freestyle on the song. Yeah, 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 on the song. I did. Yeah, you said uh, in Woodland Hills you were uh, with Bundle of Britney, and then she ended up. Okay, what's the question? She's a sweetheart. She's a great girl. She's been on the show a couple of times. What I, I mean, I feel like uh, with someone like Britney, she probably gets a a worse rep than deserved. Um, All the good people get the worst reps. Mm. All the good people had a worse reputation. Look at me. That's true. People man. say the worst shit about me. I think there's just a lot of misconceptions about you. No, it's the narrative. That's people just say the worst shit about me. I don't care. Yeah, I'm used to it. So anybody that I know, I don't judge. So I don't care like what the world say about bootleg care. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna know how I fuck with them based on how I fuck with them. Do you think? Um for you, what is the misconception that maybe doesn't bother you to this day, but when it comes to your narrative that's out there? I don't know. I don't even pay attention anymore. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It used to. I used to get upset like, man, bro. I don't even care. Yeah, I think like uh, not as many people in, a, in an industry where every time the cameras are on, people have to get there. Are you good? <laughs> I feel like every time I see you, I swear to God, you good. What? What am I? Saying? I'm saying, I'm saying, like, anytime I've ever, but I'm a dog. Every, every time I've good. ever seen you, just period. You're just, it's, 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 you're just unapologetically yourself at all times. No, I ain't doing no apologize. You got to forgive me because I'm not sorry. Right. I'm not sorry. Well, I, I don't be sorry for telling the truth or doing what's true to me. That's real. Why? I ain't I ain't bothering nobody. So how? What? Like, what's the big deal? I don't bother nobody. People just find reasons to be upset with me for no reason. Right. That is real, man. Yo, I gotta show you. I don't bother nobody. I'm talking about. I just had to bear my dog. I got this this bully. How old? Micro exotic bully. His name Dick. I had him forever. Like he was my emotional support animal. But I guess. He left because he felt like, you know, you don't need me anymore. He passed away. Yeah. Damn. And that was my that was like my best friend. I used to tell him everything he'd ever told us all. You know, I, I got I'm a big dog guy. I got two dogs. So I've had to bury I had to bury my English bulldog three years ago. She had a brain tumor. And uh Yeah, I had to put her to sleep. So I can only imagine, man. Your dog's name was Dick, though. That's a great name for a dog. Yeah. I have a dog named Larry. Well, his name was really Richard. Dick for short. Yeah, but he was rich. He just looked rich. That's just what his name is. I'm a fan of giving dogs normal names. My dog's name is Larry and Jeff. I have two dogs, Jeffrey Lebowski and Larry David. Just normal names. Yeah. You but know. it's just it's just the things that, that I go through every day and deal with. Like nobody ever asks me how I'm feeling. I don't. I just suck it up and roll. I've been doing it my whole life. But back to the question, like people, what have I done? Oh, I yeah. don't bother nobody. I just if you don't like it, hey, don't don't watch. Don't consume. <laughs> don't hey. I hate I hate his music. Don't listen to it. Cool. Yeah. Have I didn't you, do it for you anyway. I did it for me. Have you been able to? Um, anytime I've lost a dog, it's been hard for me to buy a new dog or get a new dog. Have you? Moved on and gotten a new animal, or no? I've been I've been working on myself. Mm. Like I do yoga, I work out, and I go to the mute uh, studio and make music therapy. This project, no features, right? Am I tripping? Because I feel like I ran through the project and I didn't hear any. Well, other... I, I reached out to a few people. I wanted some features, but you know, maybe zero they, features though, right? Maybe they were too busy. Is this your first album with no features? No. Cause that, cause that's something that we don't see anymore. Everyone's getting features. It's been, it's, it's. I don't think any of my albums ever had features. Uh, I had P and B Rock on a song. Me and Trey songs and uh, my brother Ty Dollar Sign. We did a song together a long, long time ago. That was on the Eastla Deluxe album. Mm -hmm. It came out. It wasn't on the original album. I don't think. Don't quote me on that. Don't quote me, people. But yeah, that's the story of my life. I reached out to some people for some features, though. 
just didn't didn't come together. Maybe they were too busy. That's interesting. Um, Maybe they did that, you know. I think it's so, one of the craziest things I've seen in a long time is, well, not too crazy because with TikTok, things are, you know, the world's different now. You had a record that came out in 2013, 14, thinking with my dick. Yeah. That has just resurfaced. You guys reworked it to radio. I saw you brought the guy out, um, the dude with the cup and the. Because it was, it was a moment. Yeah, super moment. We man. had to live that moment together. Yeah, like uh, how much, like when you when you reached out to that guy, was he like a fan fan or was he just like a fan of that record? Because that was a, that was a. That's my brother. That was a great moment, man. That's my brother. We talking to DM all the time. That's funny. And it's like, that's my brother. We shared that moment on stage together. That We made history. They could never take that away from me and him. What was uh, your initial reaction to having something like that go crazy on TikTok? Because, you know, the TikTok world is so different than the world. I don't really be on TikTok like I that. I don't know any. I mean, besides children, I don't know a lot of people. I mean, it's so crazy. I record videos and just send them to your my people, people mm-hmm. and they just put them on TikTok. They do it for you. Yeah. You were kind of one of the first artists that embraced having a full-time videographer and embrace documenting shit on your YouTube channel. Like because I didn't have a platform so to say, I guess. So I used to have to be not have to, but my way of connecting with people was I used to make the little clips on Instagram. Mm. Just, this was before stories. This was when you only got like 15 seconds. Yeah, yeah, you seconds. got 15 seconds and it's it's a square, yeah. Those were the good old days. Yeah, no, those were, uh, I, I made a, I'm going to show Those you. were the good old days. Everything's, it's just different now. It's different. It's on steroids. It's on steroids. There's no like room. It's crazy because we were just talking, um, I was just having some conversations with a, with a good friend of mine about, uh, who, who used to have a residency in Vegas, not too long ago, but like 2017, 2016. And some of the nights that we may or may not have had in Vegas that we are like, yo, that was like four or five years ago. And the shit that we were doing back then, we could never do in today's world just because of the fucking social media aspect and how much more magnified everything is. That's not true. You can. You just can't go on social media and look at it. See, I I had got off social media for like a year and a half and I just focused on myself because... It was leading to depression. I didn't say this in a lot of interviews before. I was making comparisons. I was comparing other people's highlight reel to my real life. Right. And it, comparison is the killer of all joy. So I wasn't finding my gratitude. But once I got off Instagram for like the first, I think like the first week I used to go to my phone and look and check. Mm-hmm. Cause I, and I was like, damn, I'm addicted. It's an addiction, man. I'm addicted to going look, and it's the same pictures over and over again. Most but, people's first thing they do when they wake up, grab their phone and open up IG. Yeah, I can't do that because it takes my energy from it. I got to get up and go straight and work out. I can't talk to nobody. You won't touch your phone until you're done working out. Well, I got one phone that don't have no apps on it. It got all my music and stuff on there. That's my gym phone. But well, that's my most important phone, my little small phone. Mm-hmm. My other phones, I got all that shit on there. But when I go to sleep, I cut my phones on airplane mode because I read that the transmission from the phone, it mess up your melatonin cycles and you don't get the rest that you're supposed to get. So you're not going to have the energy that you're supposed to have the next day. So I put my phones on airplane mode and then sometimes I forget they on airplane mode. And then you'll be w- rolling around a, all day. You'll be like, man. Damn, I'm tripping. It's a quiet but day. But if I day. missed it, anything I miss, it wasn't meant for me. Because anything that's meant for me, it ain't going to miss me. Mm. So anything lost could be found again except for time wasted. I didn't waste time today. I didn't get on the phone and talk. Because if I get on the phone and talk before I go to the gym, I ain't even going to want to work out. And we ain't talking about nothing because you ain't even did nothing but the same shit that you do every day. Mm. You ain't did nothing spectacular. Like, we ain't doing nothing spectacular. I'm not doing nothing spectacular. I do the same thing every day. 
but this is what makes me feel good. Yeah, I've heard that a lot of um, billionaires, millionaire CEOs, that's they have that morning routine where you don't touch your phone until you do something productive, whether it's have breakfast, my best thoughts have a coffee. come when I'm working out. My best thoughts. It's something about getting up early in the morning. How early? I'm up early. Maybe 3 a.m. When my you body go, just When you jump. go to bed then? Maybe like 7 p.m., 8 p.m. If I'm like today, I'm going to be finished at like 6. So I'll probably get in about 8 wow. or 9. That's early. But I'm going to take me a hot bath with the salt. I got my little, my little woo wop. And I'm going to let my whole body relax. Then I'm going to lay down and go to sleep and get rest so I can get up and go to the gym and act bad. Have you ever done the um, deprivation tank? Talking about with the salt? No, nah, where it's like a it's like a pod that they put you in. You're in with, water. With the water, with yeah. the salt, and yeah, you float. Yeah, you float, yeah. And you can't hear or feel nothing, nothing but just your own it's thoughts. like an hour. Have you done that? Have you done it? Yeah, one time. It was almost like I was high, but I wasn't high. Like we are in there long enough, it's you start kind of like, uh, not wouldn't say hallucinating. You go inward, but it's it's wild. It's the journey inward, and a lot of people can't sit alone with themselves. Yeah, a lot of people can't sit with themselves. It's an intense thing to do. I suggest everyone should go do it. But what's beautiful is when I'm in my solitude. That's when all of my greatest ideas come. Yeah, I'd be like, you know what. This is what I'm about to do. I call my manager. Hey, let, I call him from the gym all the time. Hey, we about to drop this uh song. We just dropped the song. We about to drop another one. Mm. Yeah, listen, the album is crazy. The intro, I know you just dropped the video for the intro. I love the intro. I love how you kick the album off. Thank you. Um, I try. Yeah. Do you feel like uh, in today's landscape of artists, there's another guy who kind of reminds you or gives you the energy of, Kevin Gates, that's out there? Everybody's great in their own right. I don't even look at it like that anymore. But everybody's great in their own right. Whose energy do you appreciate right now, a newer artist? I don't even listen to a lot of rap. Mm. So you got to forgive me. What do you listen to? God. God. (laughs) Yeah, I listen to God. He's diamond, for sure. Yeah, I listen to God, but... I listen to a lot of rock and roll, like soft rock, oldies. Mm. Not oldies, but like 90s. Like rock? Yeah. So like uh, when you say soft rock, 90s, like Dave Matthews Band? or like I know about Dave Matthews Band, but I like it. And then I'm not a fan of a whole... Uh, um, a whole group of people. I'm just, uh, or a whole collection of the music. It's just like certain songs. Like a playlist. Like say if I'm jogging, it's going to be one of my playlists. It started, I took her out. It was, was a, a Friday, Friday night. night. Blink 182. Like that. Yeah. Then it might go from there to uh, I shunt. Then would have haven't you people ever heard of? Uh, closing the, the goddamn, goddamn door. door. No, it's much better to face these sorts of things with the Fall sense of poison boy, rationality. Right? Panic at the, down this panic at the disco. Oh no, it's panic at the disco. So it just my my playlist is weird. Yo, who I would have never have thought that you're a panic at the disco Blink One Eighty Two guy. I like they wordplay. Panic at the disco. I like they they wordplay. That was a great era of rock. That I like Green Day too. Green Day's great. Another turning point of Fox took in the road. Sign grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. Tattoos and memories are lasting on trial. For what it's worth, it was worth all the while. Something unpredictable, but in the end it's right. I hope you had the time of your life. It just, I don't know. It's just, it's like when you running, you get lost because it's like you just get lost. Yo, that's crazy. I'm weird. I love Green. No, you're not weird. Green, but listen, Green Day is one of the care. biggest bands ever. They had a, uh, you know, Green Day had a Broadway play for like five years about one of their albums. So that's uh, that's 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 dope. But it's just it's just like when I'm on a treadmill running, it's like that's that we go in the distance. Have you ever experienced any of that music live as a fan? Oh, uh, one time, one time. Who'd you see live? Oh, uh, I forgot. 
I was at this Atlantic party, mm-hmm. and dude was up there playing the guitar and everything. It wasn't Ed Sheeran. He was it was another dude, but he played the guitar. He played every instrument and sang, and I was like, man, this fly. I don't even remember his name. Someone, uh, I got a homie, uh, you know, Tech Nine from Kansas City. Tech- if you say his name, like to the what you call the people that that uh the the it people, the mm. cool people, mm-hmm. they won't know don't who know, he is. Don't know who it is. But if you say his name in a room, just random, like just say of random people, mm-hmm. everybody will know who Tech Nine is. You know who showed me how to do my merch. Travis and Tech Nine, I mean, strange they, music. They're the merch gods, and they got the they the truth. In Kansas, like, but like it, like the it people try to act like you know I don't know who the, but if you say his name like in a random room full of people, just they just know. Yeah, they're um, fully vertical, like no other company that's independent. They own all the buses. They own all the. They own all the prints. They, I can hear Travis now, nah, man. Yeah, man. You know, you start doing the merch, Kevin. You know what I'm saying? You fuck around and be them paid for the whole tour just off merch before you go on the road. He's right. <laughs> they got their own. You ever been to their compound? I've been. I've, I've seen it all. They got their own city. They got it all. They got their own car wash. They got their <laughs> own gas station. They, they got, got their everything. Own city. No, it's crazy. And then the merch thing is like, like you said, like if you go to a tech show, anything you can put a strange music logo on is for sale. They got yo-yos. They got it all. Keychains. Yeah. <laughs> Water bottles. But I was saying tech, uh, he told me one thing he does. He's like, I'll go to a city that's low key to experience music as a fan. So if a band I like. Man, I told him that's what I always wanted to do. Yeah. Go somewhere and and watch a concert as a fan. Yeah. He's like, me and my girl will hit the road. If there's a a band I want to see, I'll find the most obscure city that they're performing in and just go enjoy the show. Like, cause it's kind of hard to enjoy shit as a fan anymore. Like if you're on his level, you're on your level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you put that Corona mask on. Throw that mask on, throw that Pooh Shiesty on. <laughs> and you're good, man. Well, listen, the album drops. Well, it's out now. This is going to be out by the time the album comes out. Um, great body of work. Anything else you got coming? Um, um, I don't have anything coming but my tour. But Kaza, if you don't have it, go get it. Mm. If you don't want it, you don't have to go get it. I still love you. Who are you taking out on tour? I don't know yet. Last tour was DDG, right? Yeah, that's yeah, my yeah, bro. Yeah. Good guy, man. Great guy. Yeah. Super sweet dude. He box. He does. He does fight. Yes, he does. <laughs> you guys spar? He beat shit up. <laughs> Do you guys ever spar? <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, no. DDG's a good dude. Yeah. So tour's coming. Album's out. Um, Man, I appreciate the time, bro. Real thank, shit. Thank I hope people learn some shit from this interview. Um, yeah, I hope so too, you know. Outside of P and Squirt being the same thing or not being the same thing. I mean, thing. I'm just that's what everybody think. Like, mm. That's who don't think that. Yeah. Unless you just blind and you just if you don't think that then you if you don't think that then you just a fucked up person. Like you just you just, you denying the truth. There it is. Appreciate you, man. Oh, shit. Brother. Yes, sir. Kevin Gates. <laughs>